As a student, you're performing your first lumbar puncture on a 16-year-old female that's suspected of having meningitis. When obtaining a sample of cerebrospinal fluid, where should the tip of the needle be placed? Hopefully, everybody got this correct because you want to put this into the arachnoid mater or just deep to the arachnoid matter in the subarachnoid space where you'll withdraw the spinal fluid for uh, analysis. This video will demonstrate safe and successful methods of performing lumbar puncture. Lumbar puncture is indicated for both diagnostic and therapeutic purposes. Also, the administration of spinal and epidural anesthesia involves the use, essentially, of this same technique. Analysis of cerebrospinal fluid may be helpful in the diagnosis of infectious processes such as meningitis, inflammatory diseases such as multiple sclerosis, cancers such as leukemia, and metabolic processes. A line is visually drawn between the superior aspects of the iliac crest and intersects the midline at the L4 spinous process. Insert the needle in the interspace between L3 and L4 or L4 and L5 since this location is below the termination of the spinal cord. Insert the needle with stylet firmly in place in the midline at the superior aspect of the inferior spinous process, directing it at an angle of approximately 15 degrees, as if aiming at the patient's umbilicus. Either use a pencil-tipped needle or assure that the bevel of the needle is in the sagittal plane so as to spread rather than cut the fibers of the dural sac. These fibers run parallel to the spinal axis. The use of this needle position should theoretically decrease the leakage of cerebrospinal fluid. If properly positioned, the needle should pass through the skin, the subcutaneous tissue, the supraspinous ligament, the interspinous ligament between the spinous processes, the ligamentum flavum, the epidural space, including the internal vertebral venous plexus, the dura, the arachnoid, into the subarachnoid space, and between the nerve roots of the cauda equina. As the needle passes through the ligamentum flavum, you may feel a popping sensation. Once you have reached this point, the needle should be advanced in 2 mm increments and the stylet withdrawn after each increment to check for CSF flow. If the lumbar puncture is traumatic, the cerebrospinal fluid may be tinged with blood. As additional fluid accumulates in the barrel, the fluid should become clear, unless the source of the blood is a subarachnoid hemorrhage. If the flow is poor, a nerve root may be obstructing the opening of the needle and you should rotate the needle 90 degrees. If drops of blood enter the needle, it may become clogged. In this case, you should obtain a new needle and enter the site through a different interspace. 